Cardinal Sabas, defender of the Catholic faith, responds to Fiducia supplicants following. What to do in the face of the confusion that the divider has sown in the heart of the church? You can't argue with the devil, said Pope Francis. He, there is no negotiation, there is no dialogue. You can't defeat him by dealing with him. He's stronger than us. We defeat the devil by opposing the divine word to him with faith. In this way, Jesus teaches us to defend unity with God and among ourselves from the attacks of the divider. The divine word is Jesus' response to the temptation of the devil. In the logic of this teaching of Pope Francis, we too do not argue with the divider. We do not enter into discussion with the declaration fiducia supplicans, nor with its various users that we have seen multiply. We simply respond with the word of God and with the magisterium and traditional teaching of the church. To maintain peace and unity in truth, we must refuse to argue with the divider. We must respond to confusion with the word of God. For the word of God is living, effective and sharper Than, than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to the dividing point of the soul and spirit, to the joints and marrow, and discerns the feelings and thoughts of the heart. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. Like Jesus in front of the Samaritan woman, we dare to tell the truth. You said it right, I have no husband. Or you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. In this you spoke the truth. John chapter 4 verse 18. What to say to people, to people involved in homosexual unions? Like Jesus, we dare the first, the first of mercies, the, the objective truth of deeds. With the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 2357, we can therefore state homosexuality designates relationships between men or women who experience a sexual attraction, exclusive or predominant, towards people of the same sex. It manifests itself in very, in very varied forms over the centuries and in different cultures. Its psychic genesis remains largely unexplained. Relying on sacred scripture, see Genesis chapter 19 verse 1 to 29, Romans chapter 1 verse 24 to 27, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 10, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10 which presents homosexual relations as serious depravities. Tradition has always declared that acts of homosexuality are intrinsically disordered. They are against natural law. They preclude the gift of life from the sexual act. They are not the fruit of true emotional and sexual complementarity. Under no circumstances can they be approved. Any pastoral approach that does not recall this objective truth would fail in the first work of mercy, which is the gift of truth. This objectivity of truth is not contrary to attention paid to people's subjective intention. But the masterly and definitive teaching of St. John Paul II must be recalled here. It is necessary to carefully consider the correct relationship that exists between freedom and human nature, and in particular the place that the human body has in questions of natural law. The person, including the body, is entrusted entirely to himself 
And it is in the unity of the soul and the body that is the subject of his own moral acts. The person, through the light of reason and the support of virtue, discovers in his body the anticipatory signs, the expression and promise of the gift of self, in conformity with the wise plan of the Creator. A doctrine that dissociates the moral act from the corporeal dimensions of its exercise is contrary to the teaching of sacred scripture and tradition. This doctrine revives in new forms, some old errors always fought by the Church as they reduce the human person to a spiritual freedom purely formal. This reduction ignores the moral significance of the body and the behaviors that refer to it. See 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. The Apostle Paul declares that immorals, idolaters, adulterers, effeminates, sodomites, thieves, greedy, drunkards, slanderers, and extortioners are excluded from the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 to 10. This condemnation endorsed by the Council of Trent lists as mortal sins or infamous practices some specific behaviors whose voluntary acceptance prevents believers from having part in the promised inheritance. In fact, body and soul are inseparable. In the person, in the voluntary agent, and in the deliberate act, they are or are lost together. Quote from Veritatis Splendor, 48 and 49. But a disciple of Jesus can stop here. Faced with the adulterous woman, Jesus works for forgiveness in truth. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more from now on. John chapter 8, verse 11. He offers a path of conversion of life in truth.